Welcome back, this is the Clay Golem. We're back in Foundry VTT and we are continuing with the development of Fandelva and Below the Shattered Obelisk Adventure series. Um, but before we progress, in the last video we had a bit of a uh, an issue with Cragmore Castle um, and the fact that our token scaling looks wrong. Um, <laughs> And um, some really, really useful things in the comments. Thank you ever so much, guys. Um, uh, Drazimo pointed out the fact that part of the problem is probably because we're now using the um, the FA map rather than the default one. It's a generally a darker theme map. Um, it's generally a bit more cluttered. The walls are thicker and a few things like that. So when we look in this room, suddenly it looks a lot more cluttered. Um, and therefore the tokens look too big. Um, and that's probably what is causing the effectively an optical illusion that these tokens are too big for the map. Where in other places on other maps we haven't seen that. It's not kind of been an issue. And I was talking about should we rescale the map and things. And a few people pointed out correctly that no, the map scale is correct. Um, and we should be using this map scale. Um, but it's, it's the bloody tokens that are the issue. So what we can do, of course, it's kind of obvious when you know, but I didn't think of it, is actually if we shrink these tokens down slightly. That fits much better, doesn't it? It's no, that's nowhere near as cluttered. If we get rid of one, two, three, four, five of those, we can copy and paste out these other goblins. If, if I can actually paste properly. Well, there should be six of them. There we go. Uh, that suddenly looks like we're near as cluttered just by making them slightly smaller. So that's the really, really easy option of how we can do that. Um, now, the other option, of course, we've got is um, removing our token ring. So not all... And this is quite use, uh, quite important. Not all, but some of them have got um, these. They're PNGs. They've got clear backgrounds already. So when we look at this goblin, um, that's the same scale as this one that is too big, but without the token around it, actually, it looks much better. It fits in. So really, we've got a couple of choices. And I, I did mention about the fact that I'm slowly kind of wondering if we should just go back to plain square tokens that would also solve this problem um, because that's what my square token would look like uh, and that goblin's not taking up too much room and even if he's next to walls and things he fits in quite nicely so we've got two choices we can either shrink the tokens and that's probably what i'll do for now um, or we can do uh, dispense with the um, with the borders and stuff uh, and go with that so uh, one two three of those and again, it's fine to just copy and paste these. We can do this. Uh, and suddenly it makes the whole thing seem much nicer. Um, yeah. I think this might be, certainly in the interim, the way to go for this. Just to make everything um, just that little bit. It look, just looks so much nicer. So again, we're just shrinking them down. Um, don't necessarily with King Grohl, he's supposed to be big. Um, but most of these, just shrinking them down. I wouldn't do it on other maps, I don't think I need to. I think it's just this one that is the, in inverted commas, the problem. Uh, these guys, while these are square, they still, they're still fairly chunky. These hobgoblins. Where's the other one? There we go. <laughs> four of them all right so uh, let's just quickly finish these off one two three four one two three four and spread these out again there we go uh, and then we've just got uh, we've just got a couple of these captains here that's all we need to do definitely a significant improvement um, I'm sure they're supposed to be goblin captains as well. But whatever. That's what I've got. That's what I've got. Uh, we ought to shrink Yeg down a little as well. So I think that's a really good solution, guys. Thank you very much for that. That does uh, that make... Look at that. It's much, much nicer. Yes. That was definitely the way to go. 
brilliant so thank you for there's a few people who came came up with that particular solution to it and i definitely think that is the right solution um we will continue with using the default maps from the adventure rather than the fa ones uh, not because i don't like the fa ones um, but again it's just about making sure i keep the the, the common theme uh, and also um you know the, what, what is available to everybody yes you can go and use the fa maps if you want to but they are a little bit more cluttered um as beautiful as they are all right so what else are we going to do in this video i'm going to um change over to our when i can find it figma so uh just want to run through quickly where we are what we've done and things with um using our figma to do it so for those of you who didn't see that video um i've used figma to plot out the entire of this um campaign arc with all of the uh, the quests and stuff like that. So we have done all of these. So these green ones are locations. These orange ones are encounters. So Dangerous Journey, the Cragmore Hideout that's been done. All of the locations in Fandlin. Um, we've got the Red Brand Hideout has been completed. All of these side quests here have been completed and pretty much just finished Cragmore Castle with those last little bits we've done. That means we only have one significant location to do, which is Chapter 4, the Wave Echo Cave, and that is what we're going to do in this video. At least we're going to make a start on it, because it's quite big, it's going to take a while to do. But the whole of Chapter 4 is that one thing, and then they're back to Phandalin. Um Now, because we're doing the Shattered Obelisk version of this, the latest version of it, it then has another four chapters, chapters five, six, seven, and eight that come after Wave Echo Cave. But I'm not going to go on and do those at this point. What we're going to do is we're going to recreate um, a, a different version of Fandolin that will slowly degrade um, as we go through those. But I want to go back uh, and using Figma integrate the Dragons of... of um, no, not the Dragons. Uh, I Spy Peak. That's the one. <laughs> Um, we looked very briefly at that before um, and the fact that that's got a series of counters all based around Fandolin. So I want to start to integrate those in, working out where some of those encounters might come in at the right at the beginning in the first version of Fandolin, if you like, uh, and which ones are going to become available sort of after the wave echo cave and what we may well do is stick a different fandolin kind of thing in here where after finishing cragmore before going to wave echo cave they may be able to pick up some additional um, adventures and things like that some additional side quests so that's the plan for the next um, sort of couple of videos with developing this part um, I do also want to look at a number of add-ons I've got on the list. Um, we need to look at Custom 5e, uh, Monk's Common Display, Wall Heights. I want to look at D&D 5e Drag Ruler Integration uh, has been recommended for us to look at. Monk's Little Details that's been on the list for a while. And Foreign's Quest Log uh, is of particular interest at the moment when we're talking about further developing the amount of quests and side quests and things like that that might be available through the whole of Fandolin across Fandelva and below and the Ice Spire Peak. Um, so that might be a really, really nice way of being able to keep that. So uh, keep a, a log of all those quests. So that's what we're going to do. So obviously what we need to do is pop back here for the moment um, and we need to go to our scenes We've got our Fandelver and Blow. We don't have Chapter 4 uh, created yet, so that's what we need to do next. So, Chapter 4, uh, which is literally just Wave Echo Cave. So we can create that, lovely, and we need to create that new scene for it. Um, and real, weirdly enough, this is just going to be Wave Echo Cave. I guarantee I'm going to call it Echo Wave Cave and all sorts of <laughs> all sorts of things as we go. Um, right, let's find our background image for this. Uh, da, 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 in here, in our maps, I haven't uploaded it yet, but I should have in Fandelva in my oh here we go, I've got it here. Wave Echo Cave. So again, back to the normal. Um, version of it directly from the adventure so let's bring that in and pop over straight away 
Uh, and here is the whole map. So again, if you're a player and you've not played this yet, just be aware that there obviously will be spoilers for this. I don't want nobody wants to ruin your game for you. Um, but look, it's it's actually huge. Okay, so each of these squares is um, obviously like five feet. That says at the bottom, of course. Um, but but we need to adjust that. So that's the very first thing we need to do is look at our grid. Um, oops clicking all over the place let's do that make that a bit better uh, and we're going to pick on over here to start that process uh, and I always start in one corner rather than the middle because any errors exacerbate as you go across the map so it becomes easier to see if I've got it wrong again <laughs> shush you lot all right so I want to pick uh, the top left corner here and then I want to pick the bottom right corner uh, and hope that that is reasonably good. Uh, it's terrible. It is terrible. It's so far out that. Um, so you can see how much that's not matched. And this is where we get the problem of um, it just being slightly challenging to be able to do this. Where did I start? I started down here. So this looks good, but then over there it's not. So, of course, we can use a, a combination of different methods of doing this. And I know we've looked at different scaling methods. Um, what we got this one is the background scaler. But we actually looked at the other one as well. Um, have I got that installed? Let me have a, let me have a quick look because that might be a really sensible way to do it. Um, do, 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 do. Uh, <laughs> Grid scaler. That was the other one. So let's uh, swap those over, just so you can see both of those in action. Now, I don't have a problem with background scaler. That seems to work really, really well. But on a map this big and this complex, that little extra detail um, is really going to make a difference. Uh, right, so we want to go to grid controls on the left here. Uh, and we can draw a square we can do a three by three and that's much more useful is being able to do that three by three it gives you another layer of precision um, let's start down here so if i start there a three by three hopefully that's about right uh, we're slightly misaligned but i think it's fairly close now we can use these uh other rulers now when i hover over this it gives me a little bit of instructions on it um we can set the x position like that and then we can set the y position like that and that looks pretty darn close but we know we have to go all the way to the other side to see yeah look at that brilliant so that's much more precise much easier on these bigger maps with the bigger grids um so happy with that brilliant good excellent um now what i do want to do go back to my scenes there we go go back into here and configure that um so on our basics we've got wave echo cave don't want it showing in navigation that's fine we've got our background image uh, all of that is good i do want to um, set my initial view again just something kind of in the middle and with this grid i want to make our foundry grid transparent because there is one already on the map now some people hate having the grids on the map and i totally understand that we're using ones for the adventure that come with it so we're because of that decision we're kind of stuck with the grid on the map uh, what i don't want is extra grids on top of it so i can just make those transparent okay good i'm going to turn that padding percentage down again i don't need tons of padding around it uh, lighting token vision fog, fog of war absolutely i do want that uh, I definitely do not want global illumination for this one. This place is dark. They've got to bring their own lights with them. Uh, and for ambience, again, we don't have, I've got, well, I've got a playlist um, and some town sounds and stuff. Um, we don't have anything for that. And weather effects make no sense because we're indoors. Brilliant. Save that. Okay. Whew. So big, big area. Um, there's a couple of ways we can do this, of course, is we can just do it piecemeal by piecemeal but I think what I'm going to start off with this video and oddly enough um, somebody commented that they find it quite uh, relaxing to watch just doing walls so I'm just going to start with doing walls around here uh, get started with those do a bunch of them we're certainly not going to get them all done in this video um, 
but uh, I'm going to put a, a bit of a timer on for once. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Just so that I've got an idea of how long this is running for while I'm doing these walls. OK, so uh, let's crack on. I might put some music on in the background so you haven't got to listen to me while we do this.
Okay, we're back. Um, so that took uh, 20 minutes. Um, obviously, it was a lot quicker for you. <laughs> you don't want to sit there for 20 minutes, just watch me do that. Um, and we got all the walls in now. I've probably, as always, missed a patch somewhere. Um, I have defaulted to all the doors just to be uh, plain doors. I haven't locked any of them or anything like that at this point. We may need to go back and do that. don't know why I'm drawing a random wall there. Um, so yeah, we may need to adjust those doors and things. I think I've got all the doors. Now there are a couple of areas where we need to do something slightly different. So uh, if we come down here, for example, um, from this particular chamber here, you can pass under here. This is all the same level and things. So I've put a wall in here, but actually this is going to be not restricting movement. I'm not even sure if I need a wall in at all. Um, restrict light, restrict sight. I don't think it should do any of those. I might actually just take that wall out completely. Um, and that one, because you can just pass under there. Um, there was somewhere else there was something very similar to that as well. Um, so up here, I mean, you, they've got to be in the water to do it, but in theory they could um, pass through there if they wanted to, but I'm going to leave that as is. The chances are very small, and I will deal with it when it happens. Um, there was another, so there's another one here. Again, so if they're in this channel, they can pass under this rock straight through here. Um, so again, I might take that one out for the moment. Um, so effectively, they can come down the steps up the top left here, um, follow the water. Which way is the water going? Yeah, follow the water, come down here, climb up this side, all the way through the water channel under here and back out to this side. And then there's steps here to come up to the other level. Um, was there anywhere else where it dips under like that? I don't think there was. So, uh, yeah, it's quite a big map. There's um, It's a whole chapter, one map, basically. There's a lot that goes on here. Some of it I find is a little bit twitchy. Um, the amount of stuff that uh, Neznar, the bad guy, has managed to achieve and the powers that he has and the amount of minions, and then he gets to here, and then he's stopped by a few measly undead. Um, <laughs> it doesn't sit particularly well. So uh, we will be true to the adventure. Um, when we're creating this and setting this up with a strong suspicion that we will modify things and give a better a better reason that Neznar's plans have been stalled by the Denzins of, uh, of the uh, Wave Echo Cave. All right, guys, that's it for this one. Um, so in the next one of this series, we will be absolutely, we'll be cracking on and getting some of these things finished, get all of our monsters in, get our locations written up. Uh, it's going to take a while. I might do the locations as a bit of a, um, a time lapse, um, or otherwise it's an awful lot of you watching me copy and paste from the module that might not be interesting. So I might get them all set up and then talk you through and do it that way. Anyway. Thank you for listening. Don't forget to leave a like on any of these videos that you like. Uh, it really does help me know what you're enjoying. Um, and also, you know, the whole YouTube algorithm thing is quite useful to keep um, under wraps. Uh, and of course, if you're not subscribed, it would be very much appreciated if you would do that. See you guys. Take care.